than 400 is brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, and by Goodyear, Goodyear, because there really is a difference, and by Coors, a beer with a difference worth tasting, a little less heavy, never bitter, but with all the spirit of a great beer, Coors is the one. And by Super Flow Motor Oils from Exxon. Want your engine to last? Go with the flow. Go with Super Flow. And by Warren Industries. When the going gets tough, Warren keeps you going. And a good, good day to you here at the Richmond Fairgrounds, the all-new Richmond Fairgrounds. Welcome to Turner Broadcasting coverage of the Richmond 400. 36 cars are now being shuffled down below like toys in a sandbox out here. After qualifying has been completed, the tire story is the key story here for this 400 lap, $389,000 event, which will celebrate this new three-quarter of a mile track. Only 12 of the 36 have decided to run the tires they qualified on, which means that 24 others have been moved around. Men all the way up in front, like Bill Elliott, going all the way to the rear. It's going to make this a, an interesting look at a starting lineup, I'll tell you that, but an interesting day as well, because all the big cars, that's Rusty Wallace and Bill Elliott and Dale Earnhardt, those guys that are one, two, three in points, will all be coming from the back of the pack on this brand new three-quarter mile track. It's going to be an exciting afternoon of racing. We have our entire staff ready to give you all the coverage you can possibly stand in the next four hours, three and a half hours of competition here this afternoon. So stay with us for all of our coverage. Johnny Hayes, our old co-host, is right alongside, and he'll be uh, taking a look and analyzing the top three in points and how they may do after we go down and visit with Dave Spain at the STP Fit Center for a moment. We're in the STP Fit Center where it is really a momentous occasion here today because the flat, old, worn-out Richmond half mile is just a memory. And in its place, we have a lovely new three-quarter mile miniature super speedway. We come here today for opening day. And the stories, well, they are indeed legion. There is, of course, the construction project itself. A $4 million six-month miracle. We have the cars on the racetrack, and a big question in the minds of the men who will saddle up those cars. What tire do you run on the all-new surface? That question has scrambled the starting order, sent six of the top ten in the field to the back of the field. And most important, the story of three great racers who have come here to battle for the Winston Cup championship. We have the super speedway ace, Bill Elliott. He became a title contender when he won the Bristol Short Track in April. For years, the Railbirds figured all Bill had to do to win the crown was get his short track act together, consider his act together. Rusty Wallace, he... Re Anthem, a look at what should be a starting lineup or prognosis on how some of those top runners are going to do today following these messages. We're broadcasting to you live from the Richmond Fairgrounds. Stay with us now. Live flag to flag coverage on Turner Broadcasting. Ceremonies continue to inaugurate this new Richmond Fairgrounds three quarter mile speedway and to sing the national anthem from Nashville, Tennessee. Here is T.G. Shaw. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so pleased to have with us one of country music's greatest singers, P.G. Shepard, who's also quite interested in automobile racing, having a wonderful race car in today's race. P.G. has agreed to come and sing for you, so as you would stand as we honor our nation with the singing of our national anthem.
53,000 strong, voicing their approval of P.G. Shepard's rendition of our national anthem as we're coming to you live from Richmond, Virginia. Well, let's take you back a little here. When last uh, we left you from the Richmond Fairgrounds, our TBS viewers, Richmond, you'll recall that Neil Bonnet was going to victory here, winning the final race at the old Fairgrounds track, then a half mile. And Richard Petty, a 13-time champion here, was literally tearing up the track. Well, now, six months later, the old Richmond track has evolved into Virginia's largest sports facility. $4 million in a 12-hour a day, six-day-a-week schedule has molded 700,000 cubic yards of dirt into a state-of-the-art three-quarter mile bank D-shaped oval with 53,000 seats today and more to come. Now, as a racetrack, the drivers will tell you that it's a combination of Rockingham, and they'll talk a bit about Bristol, and they'll certainly mention Michigan and even Charlotte. And Alan Kowicki told me, he said, you know what this track reminds me a little of? Kalamazoo. I think that's truly the point about this track. It has the look and the size of a super speedway, but it has the soul and the feel of an American short track. It's a great addition to the Winston Cup circuit, but for all of American Virginia specifically, it's a grand new race facility on which to enjoy some of the most competitive racing there is, Winston Cup competition. We're delighted to have you with us for today's coverage. The field is continuing to shuffle down below us now. They're moving cars back and forth as we get ready to start today's event. How will the drivers see this race? From their perspective, Bob Barsha has filed this report. Like every other racetrack on the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, the new Richmond International Raceway has its own little idiosyncrasies. So we've asked Neil Bonnet, who won last spring's race on the old Richmond Half Mile, to join us, along with local favorite Ricky Rudd, who ran second in that race, to give us their thoughts on the ideal way to get around the new Richmond racetrack. Ricky, let's start with you. Okay, down the front straightaway is really not the straightaway as you would normally know it. It's sort of a nice arc. To, uh, what you want to do is when you exit fourth corner, you want to try to let your car sort of drift out against the outside wall, which is a curve all the way across the start-finish line and down into turn one. Come from the outside wall right down to the line or maybe even hang the left side wheels over the line. And the key there then is to be able to get in the gas and keep the car low for just a minute. You got a good bit of banking when you first get in the throttle, but as you run out to the wall, the banking goes away and the car has a tendency just to float out to the wall. If you got a pushing condition, it tries to run the front end in the wall. If you lose, it kind of gives you a little flirt with a rear bumper up against the wall. Once you get out there, the car really makes a good straight run. So it's down the back stretch, which is a, a pretty lengthy back stretch. Uh, speed yet is somewhat slower than it is on the front stretch, only turning about 8,000 on the back stretch. Heavy brake pressure getting into turn three, much heavier than turn one. Then it's wide open throttle off of turn four, letting the car run out against the outside walls as quickly as you can to let the car build RPM, then it's down the front stretch. All right, thanks, gentlemen. But the big topic of conversation here at Richmond has been this new pit wall. We want to get a thought from each of you. Neil, what do you think about it? Well, I'm missing it about two inches every time I come around, and that's the point that I'd like to make. No matter how far they move this wall over, we're always going to pinch that car down the inside of the racetrack. If they move it over five foot, we're going to move the race cars over five foot. If they move it to that inside wall, we'll be clipping it. It's something that's on this particular racetrack, and everyone has 